Hello Cloud Gurus, Matthias Anderson here on location at Google Cloud Summit Seattle 19, bringing you all the latest news on GCP this month. In this episode, we've got new stuff about performance, features, and security in our Quick Bytes segment, and we have something shiny that really fits our GCP Gems segment. You'll understand what I mean when we get there. And of course, we'll finish things off with our Guru of the Month. But first, a very quick update on what happened here at Google Cloud Summit Seattle. Jen Chason, a director at Google Cloud, kicked off the Seattle Summit opening keynote by reiterating Google's decades-long experience running systems at massive scale, even though they're more recent at now offering those cloud services publicly. There was also talk about Google tripling the size of their customer-facing organization, as well as live demos of Anthos Service Mesh, Cloud Run, Cloud Code, Cloud Data Fusion, Connected Sheets, and more. But let's get to our Quick Bytes segment. Google has released a new version of its cloud storage connector for Hadoop. This keeps all the same benefits you used to get from backing your calls to HDFS with cloud storage, and now significantly improves the throughput and latency too, especially when using a columnar file format like Parquet. If you've been watching your email, you may have noticed one about new intelligence capabilities coming to GCP. Well, Google is rolling into beta with some recommenders, services that will analyze your GCP usage and suggest ways you can improve it. The cloud IAM recommender suggests you apply less permissive roles if permissions aren't being used, and the GCE right-sizing recommender will suggest smaller or bigger instance sizes based on how you've been using them. Isn't that so nice of them? Google's huge 6TB and 12TB virtual machines are now generally available, so you get service level agreements when you run those massive SAP HANA workloads on GCP. Maybe you've been hearing some voices lately? Well, Google has just improved cloud text-to-speech by adding dozens of new voices, including 11 new languages or variants. It now supports 187 voices across 32 languages, including at least one neural net-powered WaveNet voice in each language. Hmm, maybe I should have it do the rest of the show. A boon for security, shielded GKE nodes are now available in beta at no extra charge. These protect the Kubernetes control plane from allowing imposter nodes to join the cluster, and it prevents rogue pods from escalating their privileges through node-level metadata leakage. Woohoo! No one likes leakage. Now in alpha, Google's new Cloud Data Proc for Kubernetes allows you to use Cloud Data Proc to run Apache Spark workloads on your own GKE clusters, meaning you no longer have to manage two clusters. Now, Google is starting here with Spark, but they've also promised to roll this adapt out to additional processing engines. Soon, I guess. The announcement says that this is the first step in a larger journey to a container-first world. Now, there's no way I could not have this next announcement be a gem, so let's move on to our GCP Gems segment. Ruby support now comes to App Engine standard environment, available now in beta. Now this lets you scale your Ruby apps right down to zero, and it also offers quicker deployments of scaling out than App Engine Flex does. But of course, there are some trade-offs of using this App Engine standard support instead of App Engine Flex or Cloud Run, and Aja Hammerly, or you might better know her as the Thagomizer, has written a great blog post about it, so you can check that out in the links below. Do you like to manage your own Microsoft Active Directory servers? <laughs> Silly question, right? Well, good news on this front. Google has now released to beta their managed service for Microsoft Active Directory. Now, Google's actually running Microsoft AD under the hood, so you get all the same familiar features and tools and no compatibility issues. This also offers seamless multi-region support via GCP's global VPC, and you can either have a standalone domain for cloud services and apps, or you can connect it back to your on-premises AD domain through Cloud Interconnect or VPN. Google's not yet told us the pricing details, but I expect this will be a TC slam dunk, especially when you factor in the opportunity cost. Now, if you already have microservices, or if you're moving in that direction, then you'll know that their decentralized nature can be both a blessing and a curse. It's good that you can change them independently, but you still do want a centralized way to see and control what's going on in your system. Well, that is what the new Anthos Service Mesh is all about. Based on Istio, this does that Anthos thing of providing a single pane of glass, this time at the level of service performance and interactions. This morning's 
keynote included a demo of very easily creating a 90th percentile latency service level objective and indicator. And that even shows you the historical levels based on past metrics when you create it. At the same time, Google has also released into beta Cloud Run for Anthos, which is built on Knative. This makes it easy for you to use the Cloud Run Knative model for running your apps, but on Kubernetes clusters that you control. They've also now added policy and config connectors to Anthos, as well as support for binary authorization, so you can make sure that you deploy only trusted workloads in your environments. Well, that brings us to the awesome part of our show where we celebrate our guru of the month. This month's winner is Mark Nichols, a software architect from Missouri. Congratulations, Mark. We'll be sending you a care package including a t-shirt, some stickers, and a hand-signed card. And for the rest of you, check out this month's new question available in the link below. Well, that's all we have for our show this month. I hope to see you at some upcoming live event, maybe the next Google Cloud Next or the fast approaching Serverless Conf New York, which should be stellar, by the way. And in any case, we'll see you next month for another episode of GCP This Month. Keep being awesome, cloud gurus.